In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into our Disney option position. It's a position that at times has gone our way, but at other times has gone against us in a big way. It includes multiple option trading strategies. These include a poor man's covered call, as well as selling both a naked put and naked call option. Talking through this position, what we say you can use these option trading strategies through good and bad times to consistently put cash flow into your pocket every single month. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mouthful Learning. My name is Randy Perez. Please note I am not a financial advisor. This video is for educational purposes only. It's not meant to be investment advice of any kind. I am, however, a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. Before we get started, I just ask one thing of you. Please hit the like button to support this channel. If you appreciate the kind of information I provide for in this channel, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. Thank you for that. Let's get started. In this video, I'm going to talk through every trade we've made in this position since we initiated it back in March of 2020. I will also share with you the thinking behind each trade, what our strategy was, and what our plans are for the future. At the end, I'll share with you where we're at cash and profit-wise in this position. Here you see our current option position in Disney. It involves four options. We are along the January 23, 110 leaps call option. We have sold short the January 22, 150 leap call option. And then we have also been selling two near term options, including the August 170 put and August 160 call option. This overall position has taken us on quite a journey. Let me show you how we got here, the highs and lows of this journey, and how we turned a challenging position into one of our most profitable positions over the past year and a half. Here you see a list of every option trade we've done since we initiated this poor man's covered call and leaps position in Disney. As you see here, on March 20th of 2020, in the middle of the market imploding as a result of the rapid spread of the virus, we initiated a bullish position in Disney. Looking back, I had no idea that we were picking the very bottom of the market. That's exactly what we did. We initiated this position by buying the January 2022 $85 call option. As you can see here, that cost us $21.69 per share. I knew that we were paying up for this at the money call option because of volatility. So to help decrease the cost of that leaps option, I simultaneously sold the same expiration day January of 22, 150 call option for $4.35 per share. I'm going to do my best here to not play Monday morning quarterback. I'm going to try and talk through my thinking behind the trades at the time that we made those trades. Obviously, when you make a trade, you don't know for sure exactly how it's going to turn out. You just do the best you can to put the odds of winning that trade in your favor, and that's what we were doing here. So initially, to enter this bull's position, it cost us $17.34 per share. The challenge we were faced with is that if Disney didn't go anywhere over the next 22 months, we would lose that entire $17.34. So in order to decrease our cost basis of $17.34 and increase the odds of winning on this overall position, on April 17th, we began to sell an additional out of the money naked call option. My thinking was that the leaps call option we sold at the 150 strike price, it was really far out of the money. If Disney did go up, that short leaps would increase in value at a much slower pace than the 85 at the money call option that we bought. My plan was to let this $85 leaps call option cover both the near and farther term call options that we sold. When we sold that near term May 2020 130 leap call option, Disney was only trading right around 105 per share. It was $25 out of the money. Over the next several months, we're able to repeatedly close out the near term call option and sell another one to decrease our cost basis by putting additional cash flow into our pocket. Here you see that on May 6th, we closed out the third Friday of May 130 call option for three cents and simultaneously sold the third Friday of June 125 call option for 30 cents per share. Fast forward to June 18th and with Disney trading right at 118 per share and still under the red 200 moving average here we bought to close that June option for five cents and simultaneously sold the third Friday of July 130 call option for a dollar two cents per share. Over the next several weeks as you can see here Disney kind of drifted sideways. So on July 2nd, we bought that third Friday of July option back for 11 cents per share to close it out. And sold the third Friday of August, same strike price, 130 call option for $1.01 cent per share. This position was really going our way. We've been able to sell out of the money call options, so our risk of the naked call option going in the money was pretty small. We've been able to sell those call options for over 10% out of the money and still pocket about a dollar per share per month. At this point, this position was going exactly as we hoped that it would. As you can see here, between the Time we sold the July option and its expiration day, Disney opened its parks back up in Florida. 
I had a feeling that when that happened, the stock would really take off, but that didn't happen. Actually, Disney kind of just traded sideways until August 4th. At that point, they announced that their streaming service was doing better than expected, so then the stock took off, increasing 8.5% the next day. Over the next several weeks, our short-term near-call option actually went in the money as Disney reached a high of around 133 per share. But by August 20th, it was trading right off that high back down to 128. At that point, we closed out the third Friday of August, 130 call option for 19 cents and rolled the strike price up and out to the third Friday of September, 135 call option for $1.29 per share. We realized that Disney was really starting to show some strength. There was a lot of excitement about the success of their streaming service and we didn't want the second call option that we've been selling to get too far in the money on us. Disney had also now broken out above both the green 50 and red 20 moving average on the daily and weekly charts. That was like a flashing warning sign telling us that we needed to be careful because Disney was now definitely in a bullish trend on both the daily and weekly time frame charts. It was making higher lows and higher highs. So we knew that we need to be careful and try and get ahead of this Disney stock price increases so the near term short call option would not go too far in the money on us. We actually preferred that it stay well out of the money, but it become a challenge to get it rolled up and out far enough away from its current price, but still get a good credit. Over the next month, Disney went in the money again on our short near term 135 call option between the end of August and the first few weeks of September when it reached as high as 138 per share. We had a feeling that it would retrace to retest the moving averages for support. And that's exactly what it was doing when we rolled this option up and out on September 17th. At that point, we bought to close the September 135 call option for only four cents per share and rolled that strike price up by $5 to the October 140 call option. For selling that option, we were paid $1.12 per share. Everything proceeded nicely for about the next two months. We rolled the October option out to November at the same 140 strike price for another net credit of just over a dollar per share. So far up to this point, things have pretty much gone our way. However, on November 9th, all that changed. Again, Disney came out with some really good news that the Disney Plus subscriber count increased more than expected. About a week and a half later, on November 19th, two big things happened. First, notice here that the January of 22 $85 call option that we had bought at the money was now deep in the money. With Disney trading at $142, our $85 call option was $57 in the money. As such, the delta was very high. So I knew that if Disney did decide to come down in price, we're going to take a pretty big hit on the $85 long leaps call option. Because of this, I decided it was best to go ahead and book some profits by selling that January of 2022 $85 call option and roll it up and out by another year. So we sold the January 2022 $85 call option, as you can see here, and received $59.80 per share. Notice that the far right here, we were able to put into our pocket a profit of $3,809.58. We used some of that $59 per share to extend our long call options expiration date by a year, and we also rolled the strike price up by $25 to the January of 23 110 call option. That cost us $43.77 per share. This enables to go ahead and lock in a profit on the $85 leaps call option. However, because of the big jump on the November 9th, I began to feel that we might be in trouble here. But we felt that like we could manage this call option by trying to roll it up and out in time. We were able to do that successfully when we rolled our long leaps call option up and out on the 19th. At that point, we also bought to close the November 140 call option. We were able to roll it up and out to December 145. Even though we were able to roll it up and out of the money by about $3, I was beginning to have a feeling that we could be in a bad spot here because there's just so much excitement surrounding Disney+. Plus. Unfortunately, that excitement continued to manifest itself. On December 11th, Disney gapped up again another $20 or right at 13%. At this point, I knew we were in trouble. The stock was $30 in the money on our short near-term call option. I quickly rolled the December call option out to January at the same strike price in order to avoid shares that we didn't own from being called away from us. I tried to roll up to 150, but there just wasn't enough time value premium in that option. I also looked to roll it out in time, but my thinking was that Disney had gapped up twice over the previous month, so odds were that it might come back down to try and fill one or even both of those gaps. Since I wasn't able to get much time value premium for that January option, we just sold the same strike price, hoping that it would come back down so we could roll the strike price up for February. Although we're not able to roll the January strike price up, we're still able to pocket a decent bit of cash flow when we bought the December option back for $25.24 and sold the January 145 call option for $26.14. So we were able to pocket about 90 cents per share. Because of Disney position and the two gaps that it had made, I started working on a video that I released on January about gaps. I shared that a high percentage of the time, gaps like what Disney made, they tend to get filled. Inspired that at this point, we knew that we really need to watch our time value in that near-term short call option to make sure the option that we were short was in the money, still had some time value left in it, so it wouldn't be a sign in stock we didn't own called away from us. Since Disney was no longer paying a dividend, we didn't have to worry about the stock being called away from us for dividend capture. 
However, we still want to make sure that there was some amount of time value left in the option so that it wouldn't be caught away from us. Over the next couple months, we're watching for Disney to come back down to fill the gaps that it had made. We were not able to roll the 145 strike price up to 150 because there just wasn't enough time value in the next month's premium to pay for the $5 increase in strike price. But we were able to roll for decent credits. On January 11th, we bought the January 145 call option back and simultaneously sold the February 145 call option $34.51. So we put another 79 cents per share into our pocket. For one day, on January 27th, I actually thought Disney was going to fill the gap that it had made at 157, and it gave it a good effort. It came all the way down to 160 per share. I was actually about to take advantage of that big drop and try and roll that call option up and out, but I wanted to wait one more day to see if it would completely fill the gap between where it was at 160 and where the gap started at 157. I figured worst case scenario, the next day it might just hang around where it was at if it didn't come all the way down to fill the gap, and I'd try to roll it at that point. However, the next day it shot right back up to 173 per share so we missed our window of opportunity. For there, Disney continued to go up. By February 12th, with there being no time value left in the February 145 call option, we decided to go ahead and roll that one out to March at the same 145 strike price. For that, we were able to pocket a net of 64 cents per share. I'd give us a couple months to see if Disney would come back down, but it just wasn't acting like it wanted to come down to fill those gaps. There was just too much excitement surrounding the company. When we did this roll on February 12th, Disney was trading right about 188 per share. So the option was $43 in the money. It's at times like this when if you're not a seasoned ops trader, days can seem like weeks and weeks can seem like months. However, I knew that we had a very powerful secret weapon at our disposal. We are option traders. Since we know how to manipulate these positions using options, I felt confident we'd be able to work our way out of this negative position that we were in and back into one that was more to our liking. I just wanted to give it a little bit of time to see if Disney would come back down to fill those gaps. When that didn't happen, on February 26th, we pulled out our secret weapon and fired around. Let me show you the secret weapon we began to use to get this trade back into our favor. The first use of our secret weapon was selling these April 175 put options. As you can see, we got $4.87 per share for selling that put. That gave us the cash to roll the March 145 call option up and out to April 150 and still pocket an extra dollar per share. Fast forward about a month and a half, and on April 6th, with the time value of that April option pretty much gone, we went ahead and closed out the April 150 call option for $39.93 per share. We also closed out the April 175 put option for $0.35 cents per share. With Disney trading at 187 the challenge we now face was that there just wasn't enough premium even when selling the 175 put option to roll the call option up and out to the third Friday of May. So we actually had to go out to the third Friday of June to make it happen. But in so doing, we were able to roll that call option up again by five more dollars. To help pay for that, we sold the third Friday of June $175 put option. For that roll, we were also able to pocket an additional 50 cents per share. Then we just waited. By the way, if what I've been sharing with you has been really useful, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button and thank you so much for doing that. Now let's fast forward to the third Friday of June, June 18th. As you can see here, Disney had actually come down pretty good, so the short put option at 175 was actually in the money by $3. Over the previous several months, Disney had actually begun to show some weakness. We knew that there was a high probability that Disney would come back down to retest this red to a moving average, which at this point was around 167 per share. But we didn't want to risk the short put option getting too deep in the money on us, especially since we're using the cash flow from it to roll the call option up. So I chose to once again go out two months instead of one, and we simultaneously rolled both options to positions that are more in our favor. Again, we rolled the call option up by five more dollars and out to the third Friday of August, and simultaneously rolled the put option down by five dollars from 175 to 170 for that same third Friday of August expiration. So we were able to move the strike prices by a total of ten dollars, and we're still able to pocket a net of a dollar and thirty cents per share. Now we're just waiting. We have about three weeks until the August 20th expiration. Disney has actually settled in quite nicely and appears to be riding this red trend of moving average on the daily chart as support. That coincides with the green 50 moving average on the weekly chart. Our plan is to continue using our secret weapon of selling a near-term put option and using that cash to roll the short-term call option up and out until that call option expires worthless. At that point, we then plan to continue using cash from selling a put option to begin rolling the call option that expires on January of 2022 up and out until it also expires worthless. Will this go according to plan? Well, 
We don't know, but that is our plan. Let me show you where we're at overall with the current values of the four options as of today in this Disney position. The boxes in yellow are what the current value is of the four options that we are currently long and short. As you can see, the very bottom in the blue box, if we liquidated this position, we would be up $3,329.90. By using options, we have created a very profitable position here, even though it hasn't worked out exactly like we hoped it would or planned that it would. If you'd like to receive alerts as soon as we make trades, similar to the trades I mentioned in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron at the link down in the description below. If you're curious about how to use LEAP options to generate awesome monthly cash flow and returns, check out the video series in the link above in the description below entitled LEAP's Options. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.